in any given design of high value, such as a car or a computer or cell phone, you basically have modules all combined into a design. I'm calling this blue box here, blue dashed circle, a design of the offering manufacturer. So if it's a, if it's a car, we'll call it a Toyota Camry. They create this design value inside of the blue dashed box and that's proprietary. This means um, that they're going to have to pay for the, the development. They're going to store that intellectual property, capture it, convert that into um, a product. And then they're going to pull in value from other modules, such as the tires. The, the Toyota Camry uses tires from someone uh, else like Michelin and that has its own proprietary technology within it. But at the location where it attaches to the car, in the design where the design of the main product brings in the IP design value of the tire, it's operating with the standard. So um, based on highway performance, based on manufacturer's history, the standard is well-defined such that Toyota can shop around for this module from different competing manufacturers, each of whom has very high uh, research um, quality and, um, and collective knowledge built into that product. So you have a high value product that you're capturing into your design. So uh, the product itself overall is comprised of many modules plus this, um, this main design. Your purple spaces here, where the nodes attach, is by definition open. Uh, if your tire is using a standard, then that standard must be documented, published, and well characterized in order for this connection to happen for any, uh, for your product or your competing products. And so some portion of every large design is already an open source technology. When you put together all the design elements, collectively you have an outcome, a product offering. So in our case, it could be a safe, reliable transportation. And so the, the Toyota Camry is everything inside the black lines, including IP from multiple manufacturers. But what if you wanted to create a new outcome and a new product, a business, OEM, and you discovered that there was sufficient technology in each of the existing modules out in the market to actually deliver that outcome uh, almost fully. And your new job would be to discover the modules which uh, have a, a high performance and a high value and a special way to do that is if you find that these modules are highly commoditized like a tire then you know that um, any of the selections among the leading brands will be a commodity with um, high performance and very well accepted very established design metrics whatever you pay for you're going to get a really high value potentially hundreds of years of technology, potentially thousands or tens of thousands of hours of engineering that went into that ultimate product. And those hours could span manufacturers, tier two manufacturers, the research labs that partner with that company. So a whole lot of value can be in one module. And if you found all those modules could yield an outcome by simply connecting them in the right way, then that brings us to a new, uh, a new concept of an OEM. This OEM of modules is not exactly a new concept. You could say that the entire space where uh, PCs, personal computers exist, is an economy of um, OEMs of modules. Where if you look at Dell Computer, they're a company that makes computers, but they don't make modules, they don't make processors. They don't make RAM, they don't make graphics cards, they don't make cables, they don't make power supplies, but they combine the components in a way that they know their users 
want to see performance. So Dell has offerings of laptops and full-size desktops. They have workstations for professionals and they have um, home computers. They have servers that boost up the security and reliability and temperature performance. And each of the product offerings is just a variant of their selection of the best modules to make that happen. And so um, if they do enough testing and they document clearly what they're offering to you, then you're gonna be willing to pay for a PC from Dell that costs uh, quite a bit more than the equivalent PC that you could build yourself. Basically, they said, ah, we see the targets. We know what modules collectively can deliver the targets. We're gonna select them for you. We're gonna measure the performance of the outcome uh, based on specific outcomes that the customer wants. How fast can I load a web page? Um, how, many, uh, how many files of video can I store, etc. They measure those things and then they configure the unit and, and pass to you the characterized information of key metrics to help you make your decision. And they pass to you um, actually the, the part numbers of all the included components. So, so they, they leverage the power of an AMD processor or Intel. And then they take all the knowledge, all the documentation, software, and support for that processor and pass that for free to the customer along with their product. So you could say that that's not free and that the, the offering of a Dell computer is actually um, the collective offering of the, of the components. But boy, do they save a whole lot of effort by allowing the OEMs, sorry, allowing the suppliers to do their very best work, creating value on their unit and um, to characterize that, support it even, and pass that to the customer. Let's look down here for a moment and compare two uh, total products. So the Camry or any popular vehicle offered by an OEM is made of um, many different included technologies with their proprietary value, but the, the main body, the requirement hours and, and cost of engineering and, and the value held in the design is very, very high. It's a well-established industry, so intensive that even companies may exist just to perform the evaluation of one metric of one module. So for example, an airbag evaluation company, probably several of those exist that just does the measurement of an included component. So there are um there, there's a massive amount of uh rigidity to this market and if you wanted to change the scope of the product you would kind of have to start a new company and a lot of this uh, a lot of this value here in the middle would have to be set aside however if we look at robotics now um we discovered outcomes many many outcomes for which all of the um all the tier two per se um, offerings collectively can deliver the the product and the consumer outcome that we're looking for so for example the panasonic battery is one included part in the scuttle it's a highly competitive lithium ion technology and simply if you just look at the space of lithium ion batteries it it, it is uh, very strong it's easy to identify the leaders. And when you buy the product of the leader, for example, the, the 18650 uh, spec cell from Panasonic, you are guaranteed to be getting a high value. Whatever it is you pay for that technology, you are onboarding an, a massive value compared to that price. So it kind of doesn't matter which selection you make. If you go with the cheaper one or the very expensive high performance one, if it's coming from, if it's in the commodity space, then you're capturing something that's worth the cost. There's another caveat to that. You only capture that value and it's only worth it if your design integrates the technology in such a way that your, uh, the function you deliver to the customer using that technology is fairly well centered 
on the function of, uh, of the technology included. So for example, if you have um, a screw and you're just using it as an indicator, let's say we take photos of the robot and in those photos, we track where is the front center point of the robot. And if we place a screw and fasten that to the front of our design, and in all of our photos and our uh, kinematics computations, we use that to track it. Well, the screw has manufacturing value, strength value, materials, science value. It has uh, a massive amount of value that's not being captured by the, um, we'll call this the customer outcome. And so there's no guarantee that you're getting your money's worth. However, if you center your choices of technology on the results you want to yield, that takes some engineering uh, cleverness, um, or at least you need to be familiar enough with the space to know what you're buying. Okay, then you've captured all that value, you're passing it to the customer, and whatever pricing you, if you just uh, stack a margin on top of the product that you include, you're guaranteed to have something that is still desirable. So what we do with Scuttle is we're saying, well, let's minimize the space where we're the developers of the design. Let's maximize the space where we capture value from really nice components, really nice technologies like the Raspberry Pi. And when we switch and we use a different platform, um, those platforms, the computer might cost three times more, four times more, and it's focused on a different outcome. So, boy, it's just wonderful if we can swap the two components and we're essentially delivering two different robots and the outcomes are very desirable from the, the constituents of those market places. Like the customers have a desire for each one. We wouldn't want to sell the high, uh, high cost computer to the customer who's looking for the low cost outcome with different characteristics, different performance metrics. Over here, it was a safe, reliable transportation. Over here, there are actually a number of outcomes. This is why we, we really benefit from our flexibility of um, basically discover this standard for which many different offerings like Raspberry Pi or its competitors, Jetson Nano, very high performance on video processing. Well, if we can identify the standards where these, uh, where those two technologies overlap, then we can uh, make that a module where <laughs> that's supposed to be a lot. You can unlock that module from the design, place a different module there, and you essentially have a different product. And these standards just help us so much because they're already open source. And um, for products, I won't, I won't go into that part, but essentially we're expanding the zone of these connections, meaning most, uh, more and more of our design uh, value is in pre-existing open content, the definition of standards. And then we want to minimize this zone here and we want to remain making that open because we know that allows uh, these connections to be discovered by customers, they can switch them and just giving the customers that flexibility to generate their own outcomes is immensely valuable. It's, it's enough reason by itself to choose an open and well thought uh, robotic platform over the next competitor, even if all the other design, the performance metrics were equal. There are a whole lot of parallels between the, the Scuttle business model and the Dell business model. Where if Dell told you that they uh, share all the specifications of their components, that, that you know, the customers know very well where they could get the components, and they're offering this computer for sale at a markup, the, the investors are not going to ask, well, um, how can you make money if you share the design? It's because... Dell's value is in meeting the customer's needs. It's in offering flexibility, upgradability. It's in offering the metrics and the characterization of the, of the components and each of their metrics. So we basically have the, the value of the, of the company 
hopefully is not based in how good we could we design one component. These components that we designed for Scuttle are really aiming to be the, the minimal components necessary to, to pull together the value of the included deep technologies. So this is Scuttle version 2.4, and we have a design for this bracket. We didn't want to design this bracket. If we could buy one, we would. And that's what Dell does. They have a hard drive. They put the hard drive in the computer, and they, they purchase brackets as much as possible with a, with a standard-based geometry. So the design for that bracket that puts the hard drive in the computer is a standard and minimal, minimizes and as much as possible, the design effort for Dell. So for Scuttle, we're sharing the design of these brackets so customers can modify them. That's great. That gains their favor, and then sometimes they contribute back really nice designs. But the dream is we actually convert everything to be some kind of standard found in industry that's well-established, that's reliable, and that, that serves applications that will also serve this one. And so let's see if we if we shrink down the design task by adopting as many standards as possible and we just measure that the collective components does the job then there there becomes no more difference between this type of company selling robots and the Dell company that's selling computers and then you'll discover that logistics, their ability to source, their partnerships, that's the value contained in the company, not the design of the bracket that holds the parts together. So with that said, the, the Dell Computers has a model that is very similar to Scuttle. Very high value modules, well documented and uh, swappable, and very small amounts of efforts uh, in the design and the hardware of the com of the company itself, then the value that they're selling is the the outcomes. Dell is selling outcomes. Intel is selling performance design designs. Then you could say, well, Dell doesn't share their their fine detailed engineering designs and the methods and videos on exactly how to produce their components. And you do. So you're giving away this value for free and not capturing it. Bad business. No, because ideally we minimize this, adopt standards instead. And then in, in the meantime, in the in the transient period where mobile robotics don't have very many standards or we have not as a as an industry we have not discovered which standards we should borrow from other industries in the meantime we're going to provide all this information to the customers and to the collaborators because we want to accelerate the pace to the outcomes to having a scuttle unit that performs different tasks as a dell computer performs um CAD modeling, high performance uh, rendering and so forth, or a different Dell uh, selection offers um, ease of use and, and lightweight, um, low power and family friendly software preloaded. 